The 10,000 people that gathered at the University of Toledo Glass Bowl on a chilly November afternoon in 1959 thought they were there just to watch two area high school football teams do battle. What they didn't realize was they were watching the inaugural game in a series that over the course of the next 50 years would set the bar for football tradition and excellence, not just in Toledo, but in the state of Ohio. A rivalry that would transcend high school sport, where seasons were salvaged, hearts were broken, and legends were made. The two teams, the Fighting Irish of Central Catholic and the Knights of St. Francis de Sales. It's the one uh, actual object that we have amongst uh, you know our rival schools that we compete against. It's one of our, our biggest game of the year, I, I think personally. Um, you know, it's the tradition of it, the enthusiasm in the game that we come, that bring, that records get thrown out in that game. It, it's like Michigan, Ohio State. It's one of those weeks you live for to play, and you just hope you play well enough and, and come away with it at the end. The, the battle on a line of scrimmage is just, it's intense. Great hits that have led to great moments in that game, fumbles, interceptions, all a derivative of great intensity and great hits. Yeah, I think it's the biggest rivalry in town, and I think it has been for about well, 30, uh, 50 years. Holy cow, 50 years already. <laughs> 50 years, yeah, okay. Central Catholic was the first Catholic school designated by the newly formed Toledo Catholic Diocese. Ironically, in their first year of existence in 1916, it was called St. Francis de Sales. It would be the only Toledo Catholic school that boys could attend for nearly 30 years. By the mid-1950s, however, Central Catholic's enrollment had reached 2,200 and was continuing to grow. At that time, an order of priests known as the Oblates of St. Francis were among the several religious orders serving on the staff at Central Catholic. They saw the need for another Catholic school in the area. And in 1955, the Oblates, along with 70 boys who had previously been CCHS students, opened the doors to the new St. Francis de Sales High School. The Knights began football with a junior varsity program in the first year, and by the autumn of 1959, under the guidance of Coach Bob Recker, a 1949 Central graduate, they had developed their first true varsity football team that was ready to challenge some of the City League's perennial powers, among them, the Irish of Central Catholic. Well, we played the game on a Sunday afternoon, about 1 o'clock, I guess it was, but they canceled all the CYO games that day. They canceled them all so everybody could be at the game because it was such a big deal, first meeting between Central and St. Francis. You know, I don't think, I don't think we really had that much knowledge of St. Francis. It's not like it is now where they, where they uh, got all kinds of scouting films and everything else. But I, I kind of think, and I'm not sure, and it's, after all, it is 50 years ago, and... Uh, but I, I just don't, I don't know if we didn't take them seriously or we didn't know how quick they were or what the deal was, but uh, it was just a oh, ho-hum, let's go out and play a ball game. The first game was a shocker to many as St. Francis easily handled Central. To those that followed high school football at the time, the fact that the senior-laden St. Francis squad, who would finish 9-1 and and ranked 11th in Ohio, defeated the younger Irish was not unexpected. What did shock the Irish was the 28-0 defeat where Central Catholic never seriously threatened to score. And I was a starting quarterback as, a, as my junior year, and uh, Tom Zentek and I actually alternated in that game. So together we were three for 18, so we weren't, we weren't going to win any Heisman trophies. The loss was a bitter pill for many of the Irish faithful, but then Central Catholic coach Tom McHugh now reflects that the outcome was probably the best result for both teams. St. Francis gained the immediate recognition they were seeking as one of the area's top programs. For Central, the loss served as a motivating factor to raise the bar on their commitment to excellence. Since that historic day, the Irish and Knights have battled 50 times in league play and another seven times in non-league tilts. The two schools have combined for over 800 football victories, four Ohio State championships, 27 league titles, and dozens of playoff appearances. It's estimated that nearly a half a million people have watched the Irish and Knights in their annual contest. As if all of this isn't enough to create the definitive high school football rivalry, there's one more thing, the booty that goes to the winner, the legendary Irish Knight. A 36-inch medieval knight adorned in green armor mounted on a base 
where the outcome of each regular season is engraved. They have played for the Irish Knight from the start. If a team wins the trophy back, the priests from the two schools meet at midfield for the transfer. From there, it becomes the centerpiece of each school's trophy case until the next year's contest. You know, it's something when I came here in 1979, you know, that's one of the first things you heard about the Irish Knight. You have to have the Irish Knight. And, you know, every time we change principles, the uh, first thing the principal says is, you know, make sure I uh, walk home with the uh, Irish Knight. I don't want to have to give it up uh, at midfield after the game. It's a trophy with a lot of history. So to the athletes, it represents a challenge all summer, all throughout the season of who's working harder who's more dedicated, who's playing together. Uh, and I think for the fans, students here especially, it's uh, a little bit of a symbol who, of who has more spirit, who's more excited about the game, and uh, you know, in, in a small way, who tends to be the better school on that night. Uh, the Irish night is just a huge sense of pride for the whole school and Central Catholic and St. Francis community. I mean, having that trophy after you win that game for the year, it makes your students happy. Obviously, the football players are ecstatic about it because they're the ones that went out and battled for it. And you would imagine, you can't imagine how much the alumni, when you go around town, that year you have that trophy after winning that game, how big a deal it is to your alumni. I remember walking out of a game that we actually, I thought, outplayed them, out hit them and lost the game, and I, I, I mean, it upset me for two days. Over the years, the rivalry has only intensified. Anyone who has ever attended a pep rally at either school prior to this game and witnessed the mayhem that takes place knows well what it means to each school's following. For those that play the game, it is a deeply personal experience. An otherwise disappointing season can be turned into a great success if you can claim the Irish Knight. Conversely, all the accolades in the world cannot make up for a loss. I remember when my brother played in 96 with Mr. Neary, and uh, you see it leave the sideline and go over to Central. It's just a, it's a dreadful day when you see it leave. But when it's sitting there on your sideline before you even go out in the field, and you know you, all you got to do is win this game to, to keep it, it's just amazing. 1982, my senior year, we were, our season was kind of underachieving. We had uh, lost a late-minute game, late seconds to Whitmer. St. John's hammered us a little bit. Going to the Central game, we were 5-3, and three, underachieving and stuff. So that game meant our season. And we ended up beating them 17-13, to 13, and that win put us into the state playoffs where eventually we ended up uh, competing for a state title. My first year, I remember getting taking one pretty hard on the chin, 35-12, still remember to this day. And I remember before that game, even Coach Cromwell telling me, man, you're tense, you better lighten up. If you're going you're gonna to coach in a lot of these, a lot of these uh, St. Francis Central games, you better, you better lighten up or you're going to be too tense to even do it. And those first four years were tough, even when you're having nine, ten win seasons going to the playoffs. I mean, you know, alumni want to know, when are we going to beat St. Francis? It actually fires up not when you get to the game, it actually fires up the game previous. When you're done with that game, the minute you're done getting on the bus to go back to Central, you're basically thinking Central St. Francis. You're thinking St. Francis. In other words, if they would have had cell phones back then, we would have probably told the coach, here, call St. Francis coach. Let's go get it on in a parking lot right now. In many ways, it is a civil war. It turns young men who were teammates and friends in grade school football into fierce enemies at the high school level. There have been countless instances of fathers who played for one team while their sons grew up to play for the other. Uh, you know, again, because of the buildup and, and when this first got started, uh, you know, this was the big rival. Uh, you know, we both have added some rivals, I think, over the years. But as a school and the whole community, because of the long tradition of playing this game and uh, uh, you know, it's, it does mean something, a little extra each, to each player, and, uh, you know, I think they play a little bit harder that night. You know, it's Central Catholic. You're playing St. Francis and Central Catholic. It's, you can't get much bigger than that. It has to be the coolest traveling trophy, I think, of all the things you see that people pass back and forth. I don't think you've ever seen anything like the Irish Knight before. It is a, it is a definite, unique uh, trophy that goes back and forth between two great uh, schools and football programs.